chairs there are four chairs over here three against the wall and one right here hello to you is the gracious director of the Mattituck Laurel Library, Ms. Shauna Scholl. Thanks everyone. Hello, welcome. Thank you, Mary, for that nice introduction. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Thank you to the Civic Association for holding this meeting here. This is what the library is for. Civic engagement and civil discourse. Sorry, I'm trying to pump. I have a very quiet voice. So thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight. Our library is wonderful. They very much honor their mission to be community uh, uh, involved. And they have been truly gracious in, over the years, having the Civic Association be um, uh, utilizing this community room. So thank you so much. So as you can see, tonight's uh, topic is important to the community. And we, uh, our format this evening is we are going to have the developer make the presentation with all the plans. And we're going to agree on the ground rules for this evening. We are going to let him make the presentation, and then it is going to be followed by a question and answer. And we want to make sure that as many questions can be answered as possible. So we're going to ask you to raise your hand, stand up, state your name, and state your question. And please, for uh, making sure that, that we run this meeting smoothly, please don't holler out or shout out a question. We're going to make sure that we'll get as many people's questions answered as possible. Just as an FYI, there are some flyers there for uh, the Civic Association's next meetings. February 11th, we are presenting citizen tools for evaluating projects. And then on uh, February 27th, we are having Save, uh, the, the Save the Mattituck Inlet as a presentation for our February meeting. So without further ado, let us hear from the developer for the Mattituck Hotel who is representing the Cardinelli family. Please give a warm welcome to Dwayne P. Stro. Thank you, Mary, for having us here. Thank you for the Civic Association um, for hosting this. Uh, the next 
excellent opportunity for us to get to know each other and also, I think we're going to need this, yeah? yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dwayne Prieto. Um, I'm the CEO of the Ward Consortium. Uh, the Consortium is a, a company that that brings. Um, give me a second, I'm gonna, which is a group of companies built to provide local and property owners assistance in achieving um, the highest and best use for the community and also um, difficult development projects that, that need to um, have further studies to understand what's the best in uses for it. The highest and best use for this project has, we've, we've determined it to be a boutique hotel featuring 121 rooms. Can you raise your volume to me? Yeah, someone's doing that? We're trying to raise your volume. Okay, appreciate it. Testing, testing. Not at all. Right. Now it's not there. Testing, testing, testing. There are two chairs up front here. Over here. Oh, brilliant. There you go. Works better? Yeah. Everyone, you good? Okay. All right. Um, again, my name is Dwayne Prieto. I'm the CEO of the Ward Consortium. The Ward Consortium is a group of companies that have come together to develop projects that are to help owners of land and of assets to find the highest and best use of their of their assets. So we have over the past two years spent a lot of time going over what could be done for the reactive uh, reuse of this project uh, in Madison at 925 Main Street Road. It was the former Capital One administrative offices, um, currently sitting vacant for the past um, 10 plus years. The development goal intent is to develop 121 rooms and suites oh with about um, with two restaurants, um, and a catering, with one restaurant and a catering facility. Currently, um, as you see, there's about 300 parking spaces in the front of the, of the facility and a two-story um, office building. We are proposing a two-story hotel that would take the parking spaces, as you see it here, and hide it completely and put it underground and behind the asset. Increasing the amount of green space that you see from the road and also providing access to the facility um, through a three-lane three road coming off the, prop, 
point into the, the property. And what's so, three lanes? I'll, I'll show that in a second. Three, three lanes within the property. Okay, so when you come off the, the road, you have three separate lanes to access the different components of the project. Give you a little sense of, of what the basement of the project looks like. So we intend to have all of the facilities um, to be in the middle of the building and the hotel rooms all around it. So at the ground level, you'll be able to see the different access points on it. We also have the full plans there if you wanna go through and review them. Um, and obviously we're gonna go through a question and answer period. Um, so here's a better perspective of what it will look like from, from a bird eye view. These are the rooms surrounding the project. There's just two stories of that. That encompasses 121 rooms. All of the hotel amenities will be in the middle. It will also be enclosed. So therefore there's no sound um, leakage going out of the amenity spaces for the resort. This is the outdoor experience, um, which in, during the winter time, it will be um, heated. Here's the one restaurant, some outdoor space. Under that restaurant is Can your you catering. Can you show where 25 is on that okay. page? So let's not interrupt. Okay. Okay. Just for context, 25 is right here. The building is completely reset. If you was on the road, looking at it, you will barely see the building from the road. Because it will be completely landscaped. So the theme of it is elevated immersive retreat. Um, a lot of greenery, a lot of play features. Um, we are addressing the fact that there's um, a, a significant population coming out east to to have state vacations. Um, we thought at this location it is great because it's at the beginning of, of the uh, motorport and it doesn't um, create a bottleneck based on our study. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. So some, some of the materials and finishes of the project. As you can see, it's, it's, it's very natural um, and modern. We'll feature many cabanas and seating areas for our guests, activity pools. And the goal is to have a, a year-round destination. Get these splashes, some sense of what, what it will look like and feel like, some aqua play on the outside. Reasons for all the activities at the property. City pools. This is the exterior outdoor pool we were discussing earlier. And so this is what it will look like. This is the outdoor pool rendering area. The indoor pool render. You can see the, the Texlon rooftop, which keeps everything inside. Sun will be able to um, penetrate through. And that's kind of the the uh, the uh, cove there. So we we partnered up with JRA, which is Jack Rouse, is a massive wor worldwide recognized architectural firm that is working with us. Our interior designer is a company called the Sony, um, an Italian firm um, that that does hotels. Um, let me step back here. So if you look at Sierra rendering will have a lot of greenery in front of it, um, wood and stone. Just have a look at the render here. So this is your hotel main entrance. And this is the catering facility entrance here. So I wanted to show it to you in that form so that when I jump into the plans, you could see how this all plays out together. Can 
everyone see this? A little complicated, but this is what's called a site plan. This is the site plan for the entire project, right? So this is 25, come this way. If you were to make a left into the project, you'll have three lanes. Don't make left turns in the summer. Uh, let's just keep our comments down until the question and answer period and let um, him go through the whole process. Thank you. So you'll have three lanes coming in. If you're self-parking, you go to the back and there's tons of parking spaces here. If you're going straight into the hotel, you're, you're coming on the second lane and you're being dropped off here at the valet. And if you go into the catering facility, you wrap around and go this way. At the catering facility, you will have a valet station as well and be able to, to flow through, um, pass if there's any bottlenecks on the, in, within the project, within the traffic there. You can also self park for the catering facility on our, on, at the uh, additional lot there. Um, this is an eco-friendly project. Um, it's gonna be LEED certified. Um, <coughs> We're, we're um, dealing with our own wastewater. Uh, we have approximately about 30,000 gallons of, of water that we're treating ourselves on site. That's actually our capacity. Um, we cannot go any larger than this, uh, which means the project cannot go any larger than this. Um, as you are well aware, we've pared down the project from 200 rooms to 125 to 121. So this is a much, much smaller project and was proposed about two years ago. So kind of the look and feel here, a lot of greenery, a lot of wood, a lot of, so it's in, in line with what's around um, in the existing area. Gives you a little sense of what the Texlon building looks like. It, essentially, it's all glass to allow um, light to penetrate for the resort amenities. A little sense of uh, how we're collecting solar energy to power the building. And I think that's pretty much a good overview of everything. So you'll stand here. Absolutely. All right. And All right. why don't we just um, start by raising your hand, stand up, and I'll make sure we methodically go through everyone um, and uh, ask your question. So, sir? Thank you. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to do certification at what level? We haven't decided yet. What was, what was, what was the question? The question was at what level are they going for lead certification? We were looking at doing platinum, but there's some, some uh, discrepancy that we're looking to, to address. So could you state your name and where you're from? Brad Ashbaugh, Laurel, New York. Um, I'm asking about LEED certification, which is an architectural um, program uh, based on sustainability. So there are different levels of it. You said that you're going to try to apply for platinum cer certification, but Correct. there might be some hiccups along the way. Yeah, so we're not- What are those hiccups? Sure. Can't at, hear you. at this point, I can't discuss can't it. Hear you. Okay. So, so at this point, we're, we're planning to go um, platinum on the on the lease certification, but there's some some debates that we're having internally about whether or not we could achieve some items. And so that's where we're trying to. So what items? I can't discuss them at this point. Someone on the first row. Anyone else? I wanted to know two things. One, uh, the parking, you said there's tons of parking. Could you be more specific on the parking? And, and the second thing is, is that green space that we see, will it ever be used for outdoor events? Thank you, Doris. So currently there's 576 parking spaces available at the site. Um, 200 of which are indoors and the balance of that is outdoors. 
Um, the front area will be used for a ceremony for wedding. Other than that, it will not be used for any events. Stand up. earlier that part of your company is part of um, deciding what's best for the community and how to use people's assets in which way. Um, I was just wondering what made you guys come to the conclusion to decide on a hotel versus like apartments or something along those lines. Um, it's becoming increasingly hard out here to find somewhere to live and it's been pushing a lot of local families out, especially within the past few years. Thank you. So the question, why a hotel and not uh, uh, affordable uh, uh, housing or apartments, et cetera? So at, at, um, can you repeat your question again? You, had, you said something earlier that was before that. Um, just how you mentioned that part of your company is helping people decide the best way to use their assets in the community. And Perfect. I personally feel like having an apartment complex or something of that sort, if you're gonna do something like that, would be more beneficial to the community than a hotel. Right, so, so it's the highest and best use for the, for the family that owns the property. Okay. <laughs> so, so I, I, want, I want to make sure I heard what you said. So, so in, in, ret, in, in return, right, in return of doing the highest and best use for, for what they paid for the property, how long they've had it, all the taxes they've paid over the years, and have it remained vacant for so many years, there, there's a return to that number. Um, and so in doing that, um, because of the density is not very much here, right? Exactly. So, so like your, your requirements for, for a, a rental or a condo project is, is much more intense than what we're doing here in terms of square foot, in terms of the rooms, right? And so economically, what's in the highest and best use for this project, for this site? Thank you. So first row. My name is Rick Kelly from Manifest. So my question for you is, will a visitor to your hotel automatically be granted access to the beach and the open spaces at the beach? That's a very, 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 very good question. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it is a very good question. And the answer to that is, we never, we never even broached the subject of using the beaches here. That's why we created an indoor facility and, and, so and location. So, so therefore, like, don't you don't expect people to travel out of this location to go to the beach? The goal is for them to come here and stay. Not use local restaurants, shops, stores. All right. We're talking about beaches, not restaurants. One of the things we asked at the beginning, there are a lot of people here, and this is a very important project. And we want to make sure that people's questions are both asked and answered. So please, let's not yell out. Uh, and we're going to go methodically through the rows. Hi, Dwayne. Uh, my name is Duffy Jerome from Mazatuck. Uh, were you were this project to be green lighted? You know, from now till whenever. When when would you optimistically uh, plan to break ground or hope to break ground? So that's a great question. Mary, Mary has graciously put this together. Uh, Pacific Association has put this together preemptively of what we're going through currently. So we're currently going through the planning board process. Right. At some point, we're going to have a public hearing. There's going to be some comments, some discussions, some feedback, and then we're going to proceed from there. I don't know how long that's going to take. It's all depending on that. Right. So so the the goal is for me tonight. Right. The way I look at this um, um, meeting is that I get as much feedback from you on the issues that I should be addressing and taking note of. Right? So that when I get the planning board feedback, I can also address that all together so that when there's another meeting, we've answered every question as possible so that this is as, as collaborative as possible of a process that we can ever go through. Merit. Thank you. I beg your pardon? You have homework. I have homework. Yes. I was wondering. Your name is? Oh, Barbara. I'm in Maritop. Right next door. What's going to happen with that property right there? There are three houses. Is that on Hobson? Yeah, Hobson Drive. You know, you talked about the ex over uh, park, you know, extra parking spaces in that. How is that, you know, going to 
I think me and her together got to do help. Thank you, Barbara. So Barbara, here's, if you could see here, and I would love to have a conversation offline I've been trying to reach the family there for, for two years. Um, so this is a green buffer between the, the properties and also on the backside, right? So currently, you're able to access our property and use that roadway. So we're now officially deeming that roadway as part of an easement, making it formal and so on and so forth so that you could cross without any issues in the future. Um, and so we're widening that road and making sure that we retain it so that you have access in and out. Yes. Oh, all right. So you're the next one, the person who's got homework. <laughs> Hi, Jim Whiteman, Laurel. Okay, so the four acres is not contiguous to the seven acres. They are. There's a road there. That's our road. It's a private road. Okay. All right. So even with the eleven acres that you have, the the, the town regulation is that you can put one unit for 6,000 square feet. Microphone, please. One unit per 6,000 square feet. So I mean it's 5,000 square feet. No, 6,000 square feet. Oh, okay. Go so how did you come to uh, 121 mm -hmm. when it should be somewhere between 35 and 40? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is 11.83 acres. Yeah, right. 6,000. 6,000 square feet per unit. So that's a big so dream. 6,000 square feet per unit. Per so divided by 11.83 acres. Yes. So how many? And you, you got to take in uh, parking. So let, let's make sure we, we have the context correctly. Right? So you're saying it's 11, 11.83 right. times 4,000. 6,000. Times 4,300. Right. 4,300. Okay. Per, per acre. Per acre. Right. So that's 5,500 per acre. Divided by 6,000. Okay. Divided by 5. It's 4,000. It's not 6,000. Is there sewers there? Yeah. Yes. You have sewers there. We have water and sewers in existing buildings. There's, there's sewage treatment there. No, so or septic. So sewage treatment is for when you do the new development. Existing, there's an existing building here now. Can you speak so, louder, please? Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, what did you come up with? How many units? But this is irrelevant because it's not the right number. No, no, it's not the number you're asking for. So let's clarify so, so, the question. So, so it's in front of the planning board. They'll do the calculations on the exact number. Um, yeah. It's, yes. I believe it's. Uh, I can one second. I'll just tell you. I'm sorry. It's right. Can everyone see this? Yeah. So, so number of units, one unit per 4,000 square feet, which comes out to 121 on 11.83 acres. That's why we change it from 125 rooms, because once you subtract all of the wetland and so on and so forth, it deducts four units. That's what I'm saying. All right, the young man that's going home for homework. <laughs> Your name and your uh, question. Boris, I live in Mattatuck. Uh, in regards to congestion on Main Road, are you like willing to expand? You know, are you willing to work with like the town and you know in general 
for expanding Main Road because that will get very congested. Thank you. So DOT is going to go through a very exhaustive study on, on this entire section and, and figure out what's the best way of, of addressing um, the in and out of, of the project. That's why we made a conscious effort to, to absorb as many cars as possible when we're, when we are um, operational um, and sitting on our, our highest of peak years. Second row. Any question? Bruce Carlton, Banatuck, uh, two questions. Bruce Carlton, Banatuck, two questions. Um, related to the road, will there be traffic lights? If you know that now. And the restaurants, you have two restaurants. What are the seating capacities and expected throughput of those restaurants? Thank you. Um, whether or not there will be an extra light there or not is, is something DOT will, will determine. Um, the, there's, there's technically one restaurant, one catering facility. The catering facility is 300 seats. Um, and then the restaurant is 200 seats. Um, you and you and then Steve. I am Allison Katz. I live in Maritak. I'm also a business owner here. And I just, aside from the traffic that we already have on Sound Avenue and the summer, one of my questions. Um, but um, another big problem that business owners have here is um, health, and I was just wondering where you're going to have get people to work here when we really don't have any affordable housing for them to work. Thank you. So we, we currently have four uh, workforce housing within the complex, um, designated for one for the GM, one for the engineer. Um, and to uh, kind of like re, re like kind of um, on rotation as to whoever needs it. Um, we are looking into whether or not we need to subsidize housing for our employees. Um, that's something that we just need to um, address at, at when that comes up. But we are really understanding and sensitive to the fact that, that you know, labor is an issue here. Thank you. Uh, Joel Leicano from Manitou. Um Two kind of two questions. First, uh, did you do a traffic study yet? And uh, can you share the results of the traffic study? Number of cars, you know, throughput, things like that. And have you done an environmental impact study? Do you expect a negative declaration on that? Thank you. Did you hear them? Yes. Traffic study, environmental impact. So we're currently undergoing through the planning board process. So they're evaluating all of those documents in the EAF and so on and so forth. So I'm not at liberty to discuss anything in regards to the, the planning war process until that comes out. I want to see what they have to say in regards to um, you know, their, their comments. Stephen Kiley. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Stephen Kiley from Manitouk. Um, I just want to put this into context. You're located in a B zone. In a B zone, a hotel is not allowed as of right. So you, not only do you have to go through a planning board process, you have to go through the zoning board process, the zoning board process, <laughs> and uh, get a special exception. So that's first and foremost. This is not as of right. And then once you're in the special exception world, there's requirements for the number of rooms you can have. And the town hired a consultant, Nelson Pope and Borges, and they determined that the most rooms you can have are 81. That's 81 rooms are the most you could have on that site. That's again, if you get the special exception. Mm -hmm. So 
with the, with the 81 rooms, you're now proposing 120, one, which would be 40, more than what would be allowed pursuant to special exception. Again, if you were fortunate enough to get the special exception. So I was just wondering why you would need more rooms than what you would be entitled to. That, that was a very good question. Um, I'm not sure where you got your facts from, but let's, let's address it. So, so the, the hotels as the right to be built. The good thing that I did, take steps. We gotta take, we're gonna take, we're gonna take, take this in steps. We're gonna take this in steps, okay. right? So, so it's as a right that you could build it, meaning that if it's in a residential neighborhood, you would not be able to build a hotel. Sir, you're absolutely okay. wrong. I can't allow you to continue with the full term. It's not right. All it's right, so, so let's just say, yeah. if, are we agreeing I, that it's in the Hamlet business zone? Absolutely, which requires you to go and get a use variance. It's called a special a exception. A use variance. Special for, exception. A special exception use variance for the not use. Not a variance. You just said it was a variance. No, no, no. All right, let's not do this. Let's not do this, please. All right, so. So, so you get a special exu special use variance mm -hmm. for the town to allow you to operate the hotel at that location, right? This is not a location where we are asking the laws to be changed for us to use it. We're asking for the permission, as is stated on the zoning laws, special that says you could ask for permission to have a hotel you at this location. I, well, I'm not denying that. So okay, so what, if it was permitted as of right, why would you be going to the zoning board? Because the town wants to make sure that when you build a hotel at this location, it's built correctly, right? So most towns, just like New York City just passed a law, when all of the zones are now have to go to a special like use exception for it. So your, your second question, your, your second question was the same question that the gentleman over here had was that oops, sorry I can read you the code for me. No, I'm trying to help you. Are you an attorney? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are you a zoning attorney here? Yes. Okay, great. So, so, so this, is, this, is, this, is, this is great. This is great. This is great. This is great. I like it. So, so, so let's, 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 let's make sure that our zoning attorney here is we're all on the same page, right? So let's, let's start here. You can could, you could pull out the regs if you want to. 183 acres, 121. We've gone, we've, we've gone through three, we've gone through three, Nelson, and this is not a jury, this is not a courtroom. So, this is not a courtroom. Nice try, though. Thank you. So, 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 the original Nelson and Polk study, there were three studies that were commissioned that we spent $30,000 to do. Um, the first one did not include the second parcel, and so that's how you got the first one. You can go verify that as well. And your numbers are all wrong. They're all out of whack. You got to have a complete plan with accurate numbers, so then they can accurately evaluate your program. But thank you very much for answering my question. Thank you. Gentlemen over here will go through the second row. <clears throat> Who's going to benefit? Your name. My, oh, Michael Alfonso, Tyler Vincani. Who's going to benefit from this project? Are people in this room going to benefit from it? No. I'm just worried about you're going to bring a project in like this, then we're going to have to maybe have a paid fire department, may an increase the police department, and everything goes up. And my taxes are going to go up in Pecan, even though this is in Manitoba. So to clarify the question, you're asking who benefits from this project? I believe that the increase in value of the project will <coughs> pay taxes as well, right? So I think we'll pay our fair share of taxes based on the increase in value of the project. We're going to pick it up. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I'm Emily 
Todd Hill. And I just want to know, are you aware of the nature of this area, the North Fork? Like, we're not the South Fork. And we also already, the, I don't know if you've ever tried to get up on 25 anywhere. It's so busy. The roads are so busy. And the other thing, there's a lot of, there's a thousand rooms available in this area, in the Mattituck area, with bed and breakfast and Airbnbs and motels. And how is this going to, like, I don't see how this can benefit the local people. This is, this is the North Fork. So how will this benefit the local people, given the numbers Emily just asked for, or told you about? In terms of the additional rooms, um, it's an amenity. If you use the amenity, then it benefits you. If you don't use the amenity, it doesn't. And her other part to the question, her other part to the question was, are you aware of the culture of of the North Fork? And, and the need for this project, I believe, is what she just asked. It, because there's all these small businesses, like the small Airbnbs, or the bed and breakfast, or the motels. And they, this is why they're here, you know, to help with the people that are, that come out. We, we don't need something artificial yeah. like this. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> My, my own question is, what, if you could tell me what constitutes a, a boutique hotel, because to me, a boutique hotel is something small and quaint and blah, blah, blah. This seems to be more, not like a circus, but, but sort of like on the, on the level of like a playground for children and, and all these things that are happening inside of it, which to me does not make it a boutique charming little hotel. So, so generally, anything less than 150 rooms, non-branded, will be considered a boutique hotel. This is 121 rooms. We cater to two families. Um, and so, so that's, that's, that's where the term is arrived for us. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Terry Friend, Laurel. I just have a few questions before I state the problem. Well, ask the question. Okay, my question is, you have to, if you are heading east, and I'm a tourist, I have to make a left into your establishment, correct? Yes. Okay. If I'm a tourist, and I have to exit your building to go and visit what used to be our beautiful North Fork, <laughs> do I have to make a left out of your establishment? Is it another left? If I want, if I leave there, I have to make a left, right? Yes. Oh, to go to head east. Okay. There is a light. No, there is a light right there at Factory Avenue. That causes a lot of traffic. That the town does not even know how to fix. They can't establish a plan for the corner of Love Lane. There is a big problem there with traffic. It has become a highway, and it's caused gridlock. Mm -hmm. And the overflow of traffic now impacts our residential areas, mm -hmm. such as Bay, Bray, Marlene, Sigsby, and Peconic Bay Boulevard. Yep. Yep. We are fighting desperately to not be the service road to Sunrise Highway. This is where people walk. This is where they jog. This is where they live. This is called the depreciation, a depreciation of value of our homes because of the influx of traffic. Mm -hmm. It also puts people's lives at risk. And by you doing this, believe me, I'm business. I worked Wall Street before becoming a teacher. So this is money. This you are not, in, you are do, you're working for the Cardinalis, I understand. But you are impacting and putting the safety of the people that live here at risk for the benefit of the tourists. <laughs> You, you 
you have a big traffic problem and now you're impacting the lives and every everybody that lives in that surrounding area. Laurel that has no traffic lights there, you're now you're putting the overflow of traffic into our residential areas. So we're going to be helping the tourists. We're going to be doing everything for the tourists as we've been doing and creating a Disney World out here. And it is a smaller landmass than the South Fork. People came out here to visit because it is not Western Suffolk, because it is not Nassau, and because it's not Suff it's not New York City. You guys are creating so that. So the question is, are you aware, as with Emily asking, the nature of the culture of the North Fork and your, your project will be contributing to what is already being stated as issues with traffic at the very least. So yes, I'm very familiar with the North Fork, I'm very familiar with the traffic. I, I will try to address all of the concerns on our project um, on the plans, as, as you can see in study. Um, DOT is going to make their evaluation, the town's gonna to make their evaluation, and hopefully some of these issues will be addressed in this process. We can't even handle Harb's farm. <laughs> so, can I squeeze through, please? Thank you. Sir, your name and what Hi, I'm Richard Sue, Manor Tuskegee. Uh, drawing attention to Mr. Kelly's uh, question and observation before about the, uh, the guests at your hotel remaining on site with the waterfalls and all the kids playing in the pools, and when I asked, uh, are they going to be visiting the beaches? I felt it was a little bit, with all due respect, Mr. Priya Council, a little bit insulting to our collective intelligence to think that in 90 degree days in the summertime, your guests aren't going to try to filter to the beach. So the question is, how are you going to, uh, to reduce that from happening and address that with your guests? Thank you. And using our residential roads together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's, a, that's something that we need to address in, in the logistics process of this. Um, I can't tell you how many people who would, who would venture out off and take their kids to the beach rather than staying on, on campus and into the pool. I expect that most a, a good portion of the people who are who are staying at the hotel will venture out and, 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 and you know explore the restaurants in the neighborhood, um, which is the reason why they come out here. Um, but in detail, specifically, I, I just put it out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is, is the water issue. Are you yeah. talking about 120 yeah. homes? A lot of laundry yeah. for the staff. It's a lot of water that people are going to be using. We already have a, an issue with the aquifer on the island. How are you planning on handling that? There's enough capacity for our project. Um, I'm not. Sh I'm, I'm not. I'm only here to address our project. So, so, so there's enough capacity from our project. We had checked um, thoroughly um, to make sure that it's fine when possible, which is how we got to where we are today, to a point where we could apply. Um, and just also, just keep in mind, it's 121 rooms. Um, if 10 percent of those go to the to the beaches or whatnot. I mean, it's just not It's an invasion. It's an invasion. Okay. Next question. Yeah. Hi, I'm Pat Lyons from Manitoba. I had a hard time hearing you initially. You're from Ward. Is that the name of your company? Yes. From CO Ward. And JP Krauss was going to be the architect. Is that the name? J R A. J. J R A. J R A. So we're interviewing um, several very well reputable third party hoteliers to make sure that this this you know goes off without without any hitch. One more question here and then we'll shift to the other side. Name? Uh, 
Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Dr. Kathleen Agolia. I'm one of the local dentists out here. I've lived out here for 45 years. I'm also a Gulf War veteran. Uh, I left the military for a time to um, Presently, if I need to go to get services at the VA hospital, and I'm 70 years old, and I still can drive, the, the North and South Fork have well over 90,000 veterans that need medical services in Suffolk County. Uh, to drive out to the VA in Northport is next to impossible for a much more elderly individual. Now that they're doing repairs on the VA in Northport, people are being shunted to St. Albans in Queens. My question is, why couldn't this facility be developed into some form of a healthcare facility for veterans on the North Fork for the people of the North Fork? Frankly, I don't have an answer to that. We never got a call from anybody who's interested in that use for this property. This property has been listed for over 10 years, sitting there for different uses, and that wasn't one of the calls. Okay, so we're gonna start moving over, starting here, and then going back and shifting over. Good evening, I'm Louise Harrison. I live in Taconic. I think it's obvious that the people here in this area are becoming more and more astute about environmental impacts as, as they've seen, we've all seen our lives change uh, with, with developments on the North Fork. So I think there's endless questions that the, uh, the population here is going to be asking during the review process. And, and you'll hear some tonight, but there'll be plenty more. Uh, nobody's addressed the forest that has to be removed for parking, for instance. Setbacks from the wetlands, things like that. Certainly the impacts on people's homes and property values are of incredible importance. I think there's some incredulity among us. I certainly have it. And my question is, is the market studies that you did, for that, that people would want to come to this place for the inside resort area with the grottos and the slides and the tropical plants um, and whether it, we've all experienced people wanting to come to the North Fork for the outdoors and for the vineyards and for the beaches and for the, the vistas. Um, it's hard to believe that people are going to be attracted to a place like this unless it's completely raining uh, for five days straight. <laughs> so that's the question I have is, is your market studies is is, is what you have done to determine that people are going to want to come to this place? Thank you for that question. Um, so we have done numerous studies to, specifically to that, that portion you referenced to. It, it is not as heavily wooded as you think it is. Um, if you see here, these are the wetland designations. So those areas will not be touched. Um, we decided not to build on any of that side of the uh, of the uh, development because we we're going to keep and preserve as much as possible. Um, in terms of, of, of weather usage and whatnot, the roof is retractable, so you will have a <coughs> summer experience at that locate at the location. Um, but also, you know, you'll be able to drop off your family members and explore the areas. And, go to the different vineyards and not have to go home and drive intoxicated um, on your way back. Can I ask about the market studies that you did? I got that was my question. Yeah. Have you done market studies to determine this as a destination? Yes, so the, the North Fork has about a million people visiting it a year. And as the as we mentioned um, earlier, you know, there's about a thousand Airbnb inns and so on and so forth. It's not sufficient, there's enough capacity for, for more. Denise. Hi, how you doing? Denise Geis from Attuck. I live right on Sigby, so I live very close to Sigby. But you can't have it both ways. You keep on saying that it's going to be an inclusive hotel and that it's going to help the people. Well, it, and it can't help the local people if it's going to be an inclusive hotel. And then you say, oh, they're going to go out and there's going to be no noise, but then you can retract the roof. You can't have it all over the place. Well, what is it in, in for the people here, the local people here? 
what what are you doing here? What is the hotel? How is it going to help us? So I'm, I'm sure there's just some community benefits that will come out of this when, when we go through this process. You know, it, it, one benefit is that you're not going to be looking at a dilapidated hotel for another two years. So we can start, we can start there. Um, and then, you know, that there's, there's, there's things that we could do to make sure that everybody's, you know, um, comfortable with the development. Um, I'm not sure what the regulations are in terms of, of community benefits outside of what we're doing already, but a lot of stuff that we're doing is, is to benefit the community. We'll have more jobs, more, more opportunities. How many jobs do you need to live? Minimum wage? Just a, 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 that's a follow-up question. How many jobs? <clears throat> so there's going to be, during the construction process, about 250 jobs. Um, in total, it'll be 300. And while it, the hotel's operational, there'll be about 70 jobs. Where are they living? Okay. So let's just take the questions, all right? So let's start here, and then we'll go around to get everybody. Okay. Dave and <laughs> My name is Sophia. I live in Maritok. I'm a mother, okay? And uh, unfortunately, last summer, on a Saturday, I went to do errands in Riverhead early morning to beat the truck. Guess what? 10 o'clock, I'm coming back. I'm stuck in traffic in Sand Avenue. It takes me two hours to go home. Two hours. That's number one. Number two. You said people wouldn't go to the beaches because you have a beautiful park. People is going to come in the beach. I'm telling you, they're going to go. We already have problem. We are nature preserved. We have wildlife. You need a sticker to come to our beach. Where are they going to get the sticker? They already park illegally. People who are in the Airbnb who are coming visiting us. They're already parking illegally to go to our beaches and walk. You have those many guests there. They're going to go visit our beaches and loading and who knows what else. So you're wondering how they're going to manage. So they, uh, how are you going to manage um, uh, the people who are going to want to go to the beaches and the, uh, the traffic? So I believe that every beach in the United States is a federal beach, therefore it's public. Whether or not you can park at the beach is a whole different other conversation. Park, park is not what you think. Sorry. Uh, okay. So we could look that up. Um, so, so we will provide services from the hotel to the beaches. No. They don't have to worry about parking at the beach. They're private beaches. We don't want the tourists here, sorry. So um, that, the answer was to your questions. It got answered. So uh, let me just do over here. So these are Martha from Medica. The original use site outside is as an office space allowed for its use Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. What you're proposing is a completely different use year round, 24 7, with people coming in. We're, the fire department, the police department, do you have impact statements about how this will affect our emergency services? as well as our neighboring fire districts that may have to support us in answering calls. Thank you. Great question. Um, we are going through the planning review process, and those questions are being discussed and answered with our plans as well. So I'm not going to discuss those technicalities here um, because we're going through that review process. It just to make sure that we, we, I'm talking about public beaches, I'm not talking about 
someone's backyard. That's probably just to be clear. I live in Mattatuck. I have two quick questions. One, do you live in this area, especially yes. between the months of May to October, November? And I'm including October, November because of the city people that come here for their pumpkins and apples. <laughs> do you live in this area, yes or no? It's a yes or no question. Also, have you done a SWAT test of this area? How are you going to compete with Splish Splash and Riverhead? The water park that's down the street from uh, Splish Splash that will be opening up soon. On top of that, there's been talks of adding a small hotel in the Splish Splash area, and I know this because I used to work there. Have you done your SWAT test on that? Yay! Thank you. So, I have done a SWAT test, yes, and um, it's not the same clientele. It's very different. So, so, so our, our, our yeah, so our hotel in the park, the, the resort amenities is just for the hotel guests. So it's not it's not the same. Oh, it's not for us. Oh, it's not for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You said this is for the community. <laughs> Anyone who has a paying ticket could use the hotel. Okay, so so it, it, it is it's an amenity. Where do you live here? Where do you live here? So I, I live in a small town called Doss Ferry in Westchester. Oh. And, and I have a home in Sag Harbor. Not gonna work. And I have a home in Sag Harbor, which is actually hard on me. Hi, Orly Lane from Amaritza. I just want clarification. Earlier on, I thought I heard you say that the only way this will benefit us is if we uh, use the amenities. Did I hear yeah. that problem? The the hotel itself is an amenity to the community. But like it looks like a mini park, right? A mini looks like a mini water park. So that means like I can go with my kids and spend like a day there at the hotel. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, that is the problem. So because you use the word amenity, right. could you clarify the amenity and is the, can the community utilize the, the property? So, so the capacity is 500, 576 cars. As long as the capacity is not ex, 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 maxed out, anyone can use the hotel. Anyone can pay to, if, if you're paying yes. Right. Oh, so it's not. All right. Jim from Mattatuck. Uh, one question. First, to answer hers, though. Uh, Mattatuck is already part paid, and we had 683 calls last year. Um, my easy question for you, technical question, is what is the parking garage under? Specifically, what part of the building? Yep. So it's part of this portion of the building here. Residential part. Residential part. The, the uh, hotel part, the rooms. Uh, my, name is, uh, my name is Chris. Um, I was wondering how this hotel is going to be financed. Um, because there's a, I read on, in the Westchester Magazine that there's a Ward Hotel um, in New Rochelle that was in uh, receivership or chapter 11. Yep. Uh, what happens if this project starts and then something happens, there's a market crash, there's no more funding, and then we have a uh, half-built Albatross. We are heading to a recession. Or we are in a recession. They just have to pass up to Great question. So, so the hotel, at, so, so this hotel specifically would be privately financed. Um, Thank you. Um, what happened in New Rochelle, if, it, if, if I'll explain, um, is a partnership dispute that I have with my partners where they try to steal my company. Had nothing to do with economically whether that was viable or not. Um, so if you want to read the court papers, they're readily available and they explain exactly what happened. Hi, Jennifer Lee from South Hope. I was just wondering why um, this was designed to look like 
like something that belongs to Las Vegas or <laughs> 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 five, it doesn't seem yep. that it fits with the North Park at all. Nope. Uh, you have some trees, but you know, it's a lot of parking lot trees, a lot of glass. I can't really see that well, mm. but the picture online, it, it looks it's kind of ultra modern. It's like the parish. I mean, I see you have some wood, but it's also... So the question is, um, it, 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 how does this fit it's into... It's not blue collars or, or in fitting with the North Fork. No, how does your design fit into the uh, culture of the North Fork? So our, our design is, is, is based on what we have seen in the neighborhood. So <laughs> maybe we're all not seeing the same things, but but you know that we've gone through a, a compatibility image set. Um, again, the planning board's going to review that and that you know and make recommendations as we've done differently. So with the planning board, you'll go through a process and whatever adjustments need to be made based on the planning board review. Plus okay. whatever questions. Like whatever we're questions. Today, that, that okay. okay. All right. Yes, um, my name is Bill from Mattatuck. If you live in Westchester, why don't you put this in Chappaqua? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, if you really want to come here, why don't we put a luxury tax on your rooms just for the town of South Hole? Any politicians here that they want to answer that question? Ask the Domi if you want to put a luxury tax again. That's that's on you. I can't volunteer taxes on people. <laughs> Sally Tim, of course you can. Sally Tim Pohm, I live on Bay Avenue, Manitou. Um, I have two questions. Do you know how much the rooms are going to be? How much we're charging for the rooms? So just curious if anyone in this room can afford them. <laughs> and also. The, the hotel, the uh, wedding space. Mm -hmm. How many events do you plan on having every week? It's, is it going to be a nightly thing where we're going to have 300 people driving out to come to a wedding? And the limos. So two questions. Uh, what will the room rate be? And then uh, the number of the events in the events uh, section, catering section. So the average rate is $200? No. 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 Okay. The average. I, I, I'm the, the, yeah. I'm you. Okay. So, so you you run your numbers when you when you have your time. I said the average rate is two hundred. Right. It's, it's going to be more than that. All right. Once you're done. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, and so I, I would I would expect a traditional. Um, event schedule, right? So mostly on the weekends. Not, not, you're not having weddings Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays. Hi, uh, Gary Mattitoff. I got a question for you. It's really scary. All over, uh, you know, if this didn't get built, which I don't think it will ever get built. Yeah. I don't think it will ever get built this way with the amusement park and water park. But you'll get, ho you'll get hotel rooms there because they seem to give everything. Um, but let's say it doesn't work out. 90, 95, 98 percent of our business out here is day tripping. They they come to the vineyards, they go to the beach or whatever it is. They come out here, so we don't have a real demand generator except for you know, the the day trippers. That's that's what brings out the business. So what I'm afraid of is if you do build this place and New York City comes with the Department of, of uh, Homeless Services. And says, you know what? You got that nice hundred rooms out there, and we want to come here and rent them for five hundred dollars a night because you're two hundred dollars a night's a joke. You want to get five hundred dollars a night times three hundred sixty-five days a year? You'll make money with your hotel. Otherwise, that thing wouldn't even get financed. In, in the What's the question? So no, what do you do? You're going to say no to five hundred dollars a night? Exactly. New York City got five million illegals have gotten into this country in the last two years. And they're putting hotels throughout the country. I don't care whether it's Wyoming, Idaho, mm -hmm. New York, New Jersey, Queens. They're all over. And they were looking for an ideal spot just like this. Right next to Transportation Hub. you got to walk to the train. And what's to stop us from stopping you to do that? Because it's not going to happen. <laughs>
it, it's the service to your, your customer. Your customer, so his best use for that property is when she talks about assisted living, veterans affairs, something like that, or storage facility. The two biggest businesses out in this whole North Fork are storage. Are you gonna be knocking down the existing building or adding to it? That's the question. Yeah. Are you going to be knocking down the building and also if it were ever possible that it came to you to be asked to uh, get that rate in a hotel? Uh, those are the two well, no, main questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Federal government comes in. They don't even have to ask your permission. They can make you take down. So are you going to break? Are you going to raise the building that's there? And then also the second question was: Would you uh, consider uh, it not being a hotel? So the the first question is: I I'm not in that business, so therefore I won't accept that. Number one. Number two. Yes, we're knocking the building down to build a new building. Hi, I'm Maggie. I'm, I live in Dockle. My question is, um, earlier you said that you were told that you have enough water for this facility. Um, I think you said, I don't know if you said Department of Health or... So my question is, um, what is my question? Um, we, we had a drought last year. And um, the customers of Suffolk County Water Authority we're told to cut back on our sprinklers on our lawns. We were told to take short showers. Um, and we live here and we need water. Um, but if we have droughts, which are gonna increase, I'm assuming with climate change, um, how are you going to fill all those pools and water that really big lawn? sewage and so the use of water right. thank you um so the pool gets full one once and it does get it gets it, it gets added um every so often but it's not a full um refill um in terms of droughts and whatnot I, you know, who knows right. so so in terms so are you getting your water from water just 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 to answer the other, the other words we are actually collecting our own rainwater to use for the lawns and our facilities I don't have the exact percentage but but we filed them so we'll, we'll see that. thank you One of the other massive restraints on this project is based on the um, our ability to process um, wastewater. Um, so we're building a 30,000 gallon capacity um, treatment facility on site, which is located. I think I heard someone say that that's not much. Correct, so it's a denitrification <laughs> system okay. um, only to be used for the property. And where will that, so even if it's denitrified, the water still has to go somewhere, where will that go? That's the sewer line. I'm not, this, this, this is beyond my scope of expertise. Well, we I'll, I'll get back to you on this one. Gotcha. So, so, so it, yeah, so this is, this 
will be the same process. Okay, and we're very close to the water and our waterways. Hey, uh, my name is Mickey, I'm from Jamesport. Like I said earlier, I'm a local hotelier as well. So one of the main issues that we have here on the North Port is that um, there aren't that many affordable hotel options either. So you see a lot of hotels charging like 600 to a thousand dollars for a night, but the problem is the market of people that come out to the North Port can only afford to stay there. They can't really spend more money to local businesses. So you don't really see a huge impact. So when you mentioned that your roommate is maybe around $200, I'm anticipating your project cost to be around 30 to 40 million dollars from start to finish, am I correct? Something, yeah. Yeah, right, so in that case, you're looking at a rent par of about close to around $700 for your project to be successful, for the family to even break even or to profit, because that's the reason why they're trying to pursue this project in the first place. So in that case, you know, it, it just, it's easier if you're more transparent about that, trying to show like, okay, this is what the project cost is gonna be, this is how much families will have to spend to attend uh, my hotel. And in that like unfortunate circumstance, that's gonna take away uh, the ability for other businesses to profit from it. Only because like, you know, different farm stands, vineyards, stuff like that, families won't be able to afford that anymore. That was just my only question. What was the question? Oh, well, I'll just like that. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone else to? Yes, so, uh, right, and then Carolyn. My name is Ray Bednack, and I live in here in Madison over 40 some odd years. This is a grandiose idea that does not belong here because it just ruins whatever we have. So today. It, it, <laughs> thank you so much for doing such a great job. So a couple things that, that you know, it, it's very difficult to present the project in its entirety, right? I could spend days presenting this 56 page document in detail. When I say it's an average of $200, it's because not only there's times where it's gonna be more, there's times where the occupancy is gonna be less. What we're not counting is the catering facility, the restaurant space, all of the economic drivers of that, how long they've had the land, how much they don't, you know, putting in the land, how much the land is not going to, you know, 
It's not part of the construction cost. This is a very different animal compared to going out and buying something so on and so forth. Because the Carlinelli family has been in town for many, many years. There have been three generations in, in real estate. They, they know what they do. They deliver a quality product. I am their developer. They're financing it on their balance sheet, right? And so this is this is something that, that's going forward, um, assuming that the planning board and whatnot um, could, could bless it and, and, and go ahead. So, so we have done very, very careful studies on this to make sure that we could provide the best project possible for this site. Thanks for asking the question. Appreciate that. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Jim Underwood. I apologize that you might have covered this already, but I was going around setting up chairs and stuff. Um, in the original plans for this, and I don't know whether you covered it or not, there was supposed to be a heliport. <laughs> oh. Is that still uh, a possibility? Or? Uh, town deal is done. Absolutely not. So, so we, we, we sent out the, uh, the drawings to get rendered, and they came back with people with coats on in the pool, and, and palm trees and like it, it's just they didn't need to have better renderings hi Carrie friend again hi. Um, I understand you are just the business person you're in it for the money you're building a beautiful resort that I'm just gonna stay not on my watch. Um, number two, when is going to be our opportunity to speak to the Cardinellis? When is it going to be our opportunity to talk to the town? And when are we going to have our say? Because it does not impact you. It helps the tourism. It helps the tourists. And it impacts our life. So... I think a lot of people here, I'm just going to say it, are against it. Mm -hmm. It goes against what we believe in. Yep. It goes in why we moved here, and I moved here you know, over 20 years ago. And yes, and I'll move. Right. Um, <laughs> but I just yeah. think, honestly, we, we're, ba we're badgering him. He's the business guy. Mm -hmm. Mr. We'll, we, yeah, we'll answer that question. We need got, to speak to yeah. the people in charge, and we need to shut this down. All right. So uh, uh, here, so now I'm doing my plug that okay. was going to wait until <laughs> at the end. You saw flyers. One of the missions of uh, the Mattatuck Rural Civic Association is to inform and educate the community. That's why we invite uh, the developer to come in and give us the facts. And at this point, I think that we want to respect that someone is willing to come out, whether we like it or we don't like it, but the individual is here and is willing to give the facts. So I would just like us all to graciously give Dwayne a round of applause for being here. There is a process, Carrie. And what the Civic Association is doing on February 11th is addressing the tools that the average citizen can have to address the process. The tools that we have are CEPRA, Comprehensive Plan, and the amendment to the New York State Constitution that states Every citizen has the right for clean air, clean water, and a healthful environment. By doing that on February 11th, what we are uh, uh, participating in, Carrie, is the process that the planning board is going to have a public hearing on CECRA. So part of the mission of the Mattatuck Laurel Civic Association is to give you the tools so that by the time that time comes, the message, the, 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 the information is going to be given in a very organized and, and in a process way. Have I explained that clearly? 
Uh, uh, Carrie, yeah. yeah. Is there a way we can get this out to the people that don't know about it? Because I came in contact with quite a few people that had no idea about it, even up until today. Yes, we are, we are going through the process of communication, which tonight was the first step. Yep. All right, Denise. Is there a date for the town meeting yet, or do we not? No, know? not yet. It'll be sometime in March. Okay. All right, no, no date. Yes. yes. What I don't want is like it's going to be like the hotel in Southall, where we all like you know. No, here's the, the, here's the reason people. that's not going to happen yeah. is because uh, the South Hope Peconic Civic Association wasn't um, hadn't started yet. Uh, we've already been through this process. We're how many years old are we at Mattatuck Rural Civic Association? Eight years old. So we have a process in place, all right? Just attend the meetings and then follow. <laughs> um, yes. Oh, <laughs> do you have a question for Thank you, Mary. I'm Robert Harper. I live in Mattatuck. I've lived here for 33 years of my life. And um, one of our town board members once said to me, uh, people come here to live because we have what other people don't have. We have something very special out here. And we have so many people who come here with boatloads of money and try to tell us what the North Fork is all about. Um, you probably know a lot of who I'm talking to. Uh, we had a proposal for a hardware store we didn't want or didn't need. Um, we have an empty building on Love Lane because a developer decided to put a bank on uh, the main road. Uh, which I have to get to by crossing across traffic. Obviously, uh, you've never been here in the summer. Uh, you've never taken your life in your hands to make a left-hand turn. <laughs> and uh, there are people who get injured. Uh, I had a friend who got rear-ended on his wedding day going to the church right up here. And I have a sister who was almost killed trying to make a left-hand turn into GNS where she worked. Uh, you don't know the North Fork. If you look around here, you're not seeing the splish splash crap. You're seeing people who have roots here who care about the local businesses. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, how do you know about what the North Fork is all about if you don't even live here? Yeah. I'm not sure what a splish splash crowd is. <laughs> I know my crowd. I know I know what this was about, so I don't know what that means. Um, again, the DOT planning board would address all of the traffic concerns that you have expressed that has been expressed many times over today. And and we will keep that in mind as we go through this process because it seems to be the top priority. Not widening our roads. Thank you. Well, everyone, thank you so very much for being here this evening. Uh, applause to all of you for coming out. Thank you.